This was me on Halloween when I was 11. I was a little girl still fascinated with playing dress up. I was a candy corn. My mom said I was the cutest candy corn she's ever seen. I didn't do much acting for this part because, well, candy corn is a food. If I really wanted to commit to the role, I would have sat in a bowl outside of someone's house. Here's a photo of me from our Halloween in fourth grade. For the school day, we were told to dress as one of our parents. My whole life, people have told me I look like just like my dad. So without hesitation, I had to dress just like my bald twin. This day was the only day where I was allowed to wear a bald cap to school with baggy jeans and loafers, and it was perfectly acceptable. Everyone else was doing it, and it's safe to say I crushed it. I walked around cursing, talking on the phone, and telling people what to do, because that's what dads do, right? <laughs> By middle school, I would play a nerd, and I'd feel smart with my overalls and black frame, flame, framed glasses. I felt like I could solve any math problem that was thrown my way. By high school, I was a superhero, and I would feel powerful with my cape, flying around the house and feeling like the strongest person in the world. Halloween is a day where we can step out of our comfort zone and become someone else. This is the one day when it's perfectly okay with society that we dress up in crazy, sometimes risque outfits and step outside of ourselves. We take on characters, we take on personas, we change. We wear different masks, and that concept of the mask is key. So what's our attraction to Halloween? In 2015, Americans spent almost $7 billion on Halloween, averaging about $74 per person on costumes, candy, and decorations. So why are we so willing to spend this kind of money for one night? A seminal study in 1971 was conducted by psychologist Philip Zimbardo. He wanted to find out whether people's behavior is affected by the physical environment, the atmosphere, the surroundings, whether soft and peaceful or rough and tumble. As part of the environment, he set out to see if we truly let our costume define our behaviors. Zimbardo set up a fake jail in a Stanford basement, dressed half of his students as prisoners and half of them as guards. Within the first few hours, guards began to harass and brutalize the prisoners, making them do push-ups, verbally abusing them, and acting as how they believed a guard would act. Soon, guards became more, more aggressive and prisoners more submissive. He deduced that the guards' behavior was affected by their costumes. He found that when they stepped into their uniforms that indicate authority or weakness, they become the typical guard or the typical prisoner. This is the effect costumes have on us all. In a ball gown, we become elegant. A suit and tie, we're serious. It's called enclosed cognition. Our physical appearance affects the way our brains work. Think about your life and how this could apply. Right now, you can't see me. Behind these shades, I feel invisible. I also feel invincible, yet kind of cool. In these glasses, there's something about my identity that you can't see. These glasses boost my confidence because I know you can't read my emotions. You can't see my cheekbones, my eyebrows, or even if I'm looking at you. And that's what costumes do to us. They hide our body language and disguise our insecurities. A subsequent study was performed in 1979 by Purdue University psychologists. They wanted to see how wearing a mask could affect a child's willingness to misbehave. Kids were told that they could only take two pieces of candy, but 67% of the kids in masks took more than two. It showed that when we put on a mask, we are more willing to change who we are. Our morals change. How often is it that in a movie we see, yet also in real life, a masked criminal? When we were little, we would watch cartoons with the bank robbers who wore little black masks with the black and white striped shirts. Sometimes they were in dark clothes with pantyhose on their heads. They think they're getting away with something because we won't be able to figure out who they are. The problem is, when we think we're someone we're not, we lose our sense of self. On the other hand, sometimes we wear costumes to express our insecurities or give us that much-needed ego boost. Wearing these sunglasses give me the confidence I need to present this speech. They make me believe I'm invincible enough to be someone else. There are two phenomena I would like to highlight today. They can shed a positive light on costume wearing. One of them is called live-action role-play, commonly referred to as LARPing. It's a form of role-play where people of all ages dress as their own character and set out to the real world to interact with one another in a fictional setting. Characters learn what it feels like to be strong, weak, or feared. LARPers find the power to defend their kingdoms and fight for their villages. It shows them what it's like to be a leader and what it is like to be a villain without real-world consequences. Comic-Con is another event that fosters creative expression through costumes. This San Diego comic book convention brings in people from all around the world. This idea of cosplay helps people share in their common interests of comic books while dressing up as their favorite characters. 
I guess you could kind of compare it to Halloween. So what message am I trying to send all of you? Well, around the time I was dressing up as a candy corn, I saw a movie called Step Brothers. You may have heard of it. There's a scene where Step Brothers Dale and Brennan are working at the famous Catalina wine mixer. The live band has been kicked off the stage, so Brennan and Dale need to come up with a plan. Dale's father and Brennan's stepfather, Robert, encourages the brothers to follow their dreams of becoming performers. He says that when he was a child, he always wanted to be a dinosaur. His own father discouraged him because it was evidently an impractical lifestyle choice. Robert's message to them is, don't let anyone tell you what you can or cannot be, and stay true to who you are. As we develop and grow, we fall into our predetermined roles in society. What we wear on a single day can influence how we behave. We lose our true selves because people like Robert's father tell us to stop being a dinosaur. Costumes make us different. They change our identity for a short period of time and make us act in unusual ways. They turn Stanford students into prisoners and guards and children into thieves. Now, I'm not saying to give up on costumes completely. I'm not telling you to stop running from house to house, gathering candy from strangers. What I'm saying is, we don't need masks and costumes to define who we are. Dressing up as a superhero or nerd or even my dad did change my behavior, but it did not make me a different person. It's okay that we LARP or use cosplay because they are forms of self-expression. It's okay that when we dress up, as long as we don't lose our individuality. It's important that you stay true to yourself even when you don't come out from behind the mask. Don't let your sense of morality, don't lose your sense of morality or let an outfit define you. And most importantly, don't lose your dinosaur. Thank you. <laughs>